Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Billy Blinks, joined as always by my co-host, Brian. Hi, everybody. And friend of the show, host of the Strat Chat podcast, Kyle Petty. Hi, hello, good evening, and good day. I think, oh, I think anybody <laughs> at this point now watching our amazing race coverage is familiar with Kyle. We've been lucky to have him every week. Glad to have you again, brother. Um, we are here. here. Season 35, guys, episode four, The Day Keeps Rocking Here in Vietnam, part two of the mega leg so we will if you know us we like a good old-fashioned elimination and we did get an elimination we will get to that at the end of the episode but we always start and kick off with first did you guys like the episode brian what did you think um i really like the challenges or the roadblocks and detour i just thought that seeing so much of it was a little bit much this is one that i think would have fit well with an hour I completely agree with that. I completely agree. Um, These are super fun. But again, 90 minutes. I'm starting to believe that American race, amazing race should not have been extended to the 90. Um, You could have stuck anything, even just do like a repeat of the bold and beautiful just to fill in that last half hour of the evening. I don't know. (laughs) But this isn't it. Kyle wants bold and beautiful. Um, I was mostly <laughs> positive on the episode. Like Brian said, I thought the challenges were good. I thought they were the most maybe culturally relevant kind of. I mm-hmm. love the challenges that are day to day life. I love the landmarks. And we did get a little bit of the landmarks, obviously, towards the end of the episode. But I've always been the biggest fan of the amazing race when we get to see the real like slice of life. That's why mm-hmm. I like the travel, the transport. We got to see the fish market we got to see all that kind of stuff the mattresses and we'll, we'll get to all of that but I, I i was maybe probably the most positive of the three this week the 90 minute format is is interesting i'm gonna hold my judgment until the end of the season obviously i had my issues with it last week having a non-elimination i think as long as like i said i maybe i'm just like a sick bastard but like as long as i get an elimination at the end of the episode that's an actual elimination and not like a survivor elimination then you know i'm probably pretty happy um and honestly just saying that i'm probably more positive on it because of the dumpster fire survivor was that we watched immediately before this so now i'm starting to think about it that's probably a lot of my opinion but a lot of the amazing race fans here do watch survivors well probably mm-hmm. will get the reference that i'm talking about um, we start the second part of the mega leg. Uh, we are, like I said, in Vietnam. They let off by letting us know that they are second biggest producers of coffee in the world. Um, I love good coffee. Uh, but we get immediately to a detour. They have to go find a barista at the Cafe to Dieck to get their clue. The detour is either stand or deliver. Um, stand. You have to pick up fish throughout a fish market. You have to go and get the, it's like nine to 12 of them looked like, and they had a bunch of bins. You had your own stand. And you had to match them completely in the same orientation as the actual fish uh, market stand lady, who I know Brian was a big fan of the fish market lady. But before we get to the fish market lady, we obviously always give our shout out to our um, amazing race uh, deity, Logan. Um, I noticed when I read last week's blog that he mentioned that he likes song references and I'm not going to give him outcast or Jada kiss or anything like that, but I will <laughs> give you a uh, Afro man uh, cult 45. You guys know the beginning of cult 45, the blind man walking down the stick in the fish market, taking a deep breath. I'm not going to finish it. I don't want to offend anybody. Logan will know what I'm talking about. You all know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I thought this was fun. Like I thought this was, relatively easy frankly and i thought it was one that may have seemed like a i don't want to say relatively obvious pick but not like a not a trap one per se bry what did you think of the challenge there kyle and then we'll go to the second half deliver like what did i think of the fish the fish does that challenge in general no i thought i thought the fish was cool but honestly man if i depending on who my partner was i think i do the mattresses i have a note here and i'll get to that when we get to the deliver Listen, this was nasty. Okay. <laughs> like when, when I would have I definitely would have chosen this fish thing, but like I would not have thought that they would be alive. Um, I had a really rough go with this. <laughs> like, like really, really bad. Um, watching them flop around and jump. Oh, I was screaming watching it. Like, absolutely not. Like horrible. So you that that's a non-starter for you. <sighs> Well, compared, compared to, to the, liver, you, I, that's the problem. Such- like, I still would have chosen it, but I would have been screaming and crying the entire time. But you would um, have done it. 
Um, I thought I like the, the the old lady was classic. She was she awesome, was, man. Like she was the best part of the whole episode. Yeah, she she was a she's an amazing race stand. Like she was ready. They Phil came out there and was like, "Hey, this is what you're gonna do," and she did it ten tenfold. Yes, tenfold. And when you're wrong, some might even say she stood and delivered. Yeah, she did. That's true. Hey. So this is this season's uh, Digibed. So yes, far. so far. Yes, yes, correct. <laughs> Did Those mattresses, know? they didn't look comfortable. They were like this thin. Yeah, no yeah, wonder why right. they do four. Yeah, let's get foam. So the other half yeah. of the detour you could choose was deliver. You would have to take four 66 pound mattresses and go 300 yards to the West Hotel. They left out the detail that they would have to go up three flights of stairs that were very thin. Uh, Bri, my exact note that I had here, I would go with this. If I were a two guy group and you were relatively in shape, like if yes. it's me and you doing it, hundred percent, we're taking the damn mattresses and we're running you, the three hundred. You don't. Who cares if you ruin the mattress? Just blast that thing up the stairs. Dude, yeah, are you kidding me? You could kill that. Like that's not that hard. Three hundred yards. The main thing too, which we saw, you got to pay attention to which direction you need to go. Yeah, to. I think mm-hmm. that's a pretty fair starting point for any kind of challenge. Go in the right direction. And this is the evilness in me. I think it'd be fun to like. Pre- run into people on purpose and act like, oh, I didn't see you, you know, because you're walking around and you have that thing over your, like the mattress over your head and just kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. run into people. I think that'd oh, be kind of fun. It's too early for nasties. <laughs> Sounds like a, you're playing Grand Theft Auto, basically, with the mattress. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joel and Garrett took the opposite approach. They wanted to help everybody. So they were showing everybody how to go to and up the mattresses, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you got the you got, obviously you got the pivot pivot. I was waiting for someone to give us a pivot reference, so I was very happy with that. Stand very happy. There. Um, that was that was such a low hanging fruit in that challenge. I'm like, I literally <laughs> once they said they had to go up the stairs. I'm like, when are they going to set up like the friends reference? So, you know, it's fine. I'm sure a lot of the audience got a kick out of it, and we're we're pointing, you know, getting their little Leo point. I've been the most like mild mannered crowd Leo point of all time. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know um, what the you guys are talking about. What? From Friends. Uh, friends. I don't want to say that. The Pivots. mattress from Friends. Like, it's like yeah, one of their trying to bring the couch up the, the couch. apartment steps. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but do you think I watched that show? I, I, listen, I mean, it's just not that you if like. You don't, you should. I, I, show, but it's like saying you've never seen an episode of Gilmore Girls. Oh, well, even I haven't seen Gilmore Girls. I haven't so seen you guys, what? <laughs> oh, you guys are so nuts. No, I don't even know I'm where I'm going to find it. Old wrong this that's what i say to you guys <laughs> sheesh <laughs> nah you're done she was basically oh the dude yeah the dude on the the yankees guy right isn't that the yankees dude no i'm talking about like gladiator <laughs> oh oh i'm talking about the dude that's in the meme with the beard at the yankees game where he's like <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> gotta put we that got in a lot there. of references coming here there's a good this is good though i this is this is not where i thought it was going <laughs> <laughs> um all right so this like i said this just comes down to your team composition your two in shape guys or larger guys i'd probably do the mattresses your sisters or something you're smaller not in shape you shouldn't do it um pivot pivot reference oh so this actually i had a like a loose mario party reference here i forgot about this because they had to kind of go back and forth and grab things along the path, it reminded me of that game. Like, it was like Frigid Bridge where you had to grab the ice cube and walk along the path, dump it, and you have to go back, grab another ice cube, bring it back. That's kind of like a thing I had. Uh, that's, that's a good one. You'll have that one. That's I, 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 know, I have to see it to remember. You'll see it. Yeah. Um, the route info that you would get, uh, it was to the Ong Pagoda. So uh, first thing I thought of was like Piercing Pagoda in the mall. wonder if there's any relation. Right, uh, you're losing me on these references tonight, man. Whew. The piercing Brian, were you, pagoda. You, were you were a '90s baby? We, you, Kyle, you know what I'm talking about, right? I do know. It's like a kiosk in the mall. Like it wasn't. Oh, yes. you're not talking about a show. You're just talking about a no, mall. piercing pagoda yeah. in the mall, like the oh, kiosks okay. in the I mall. Like, where you up another, I like your silver link chains when you were in middle school. <laughs> the one where we went to the mall is not like how they label the episodes, right? <laughs> what are you talking friends. about in Friends? Isn't that how they label the episode? Yeah, but this isn't a Friends reference. We're talking about like in real life. I know. I I know. Oof, oof, lots of oof. You're fighting in the club. (laughs) You're fighting in the club. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, so the, the pagoda. You had to write a wish on a card, then they put it in this cool kind of like paper mache lantern type thing and hung it up. Did everyone get a, a note from home or was it just the first guy, set of guys? Yeah, I think it was just the... Uh, just Joel and Garrett. Joel and Garrett because they said like it was hidden in their luggage. Oh, uh, okay. That's cool. I didn't. I know that they don't always show like everything, even with 90 minutes they could have, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss out on that. Um, when you got the clue, it got you to the roadblock. This was who wants to play a matchmaker. Um, Brian, you had kind of set off show that this reminds you more of something that would be like late game, right? Like this yeah. may be kind of early for one of these, because this is just a punishing. Someone just goes home off this challenge. Yeah. Um, if I was the partner in this, I would want to do, I would be the one that want to do this one. You want the destiny in your hands. Well, I think I, I have a pretty good eye of like I like playing at Kondai Kate's that match game where you gotta find the difference between the pictures. So like right. I uh this is my note says this is photo hunt on Mega Touch. Yeah, I I, I was yes. good at that. So I would I would want to be the one. Sync. Like because I imagine if I did this show, I would probably do it with my wife. And that's how I kind of imagine a lot of these challenges. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. this would be one that I would not want her to do. Would I send Emily to do this challenge or would I do it? Because like I'd have to do that fish challenge by myself. She can't lift the matches. So this one I would we would be dead last because I'd be doing all the work if I was with her. Top. Yeah, I mean, remember, I mean I, there should be there used to be a rule that you had to like alternate these two. Like I don't I'm know even just saying the fish challenge. I'd be doing all the work. She's not touching those living living animals like flopping around. There's no Emily way. would grab the fish. Emily would grab the fish. She wouldn't want to do the mattresses, but she would do it. I would let her do it. I'd let her do it. She's pretty she's pretty good at that kind of stuff to matching, but I would be fine doing that as well. Like you said, you just gotta look for the quick things. And I'm calling for a damn check every time I find one that's even close. Yeah, I'm making that dude follow me around like my personal assistant. <laughs> like no shot. Like that that is something I'm not letting that dude just go chill and only call him once in a while. He's yeah, you just call as soon as like somebody's close, you just call a check to like call check to just them. kill time. Yeah. Come on, gamesmanship at this point. Let's go. Wow. I think my anxiety would have gotten the best of me in this. Once I start seeing other people start passing me, I think I would have started to panic, and then I would just be doubling back over spaces that I already looked at, and um, I'd have a really hard time with this. Um, but not because I can't match, but because, like, you know, just getting real anxious. <laughs> um, Chelsea was the first to crack the game. Um, what was interesting about this, too, is the – end point was right there if you didn't have to yes. travel once you've done it once you had it it was boom you were right there with phil um chelsea and uh robin finished first they won a trip to uh, madrid so good for good them. To them uh brian as per usual run us down the order and we will get to the eliminated team and our thoughts all right, so first place, Chelsea and Robin, the ones that wouldn't give, would not talk to anybody. Uh, second place, like uh, Steve and Anna Lee. Third place, Todd and Ashley. Fourth place, Joe and Ian. Fifth place, Rob and Corey. Sixth place, Liam and Jeremy. Seventh place, And is it Andre? I always, I always mess this up. Is it, is it Andrea? Right? I think I believe so. so. Andre and Melina. I think that's her name. Yeah, sounds good to me. Eighth place, Greg and John. Ninth place, Joel and Garrett. Tenth place, um, Lena and Margo. Or yeah, I think it's Margo. Last place, Jocelyn and Victor. So mm. they fell. Jocelyn and Victor. I mean, they had they won. They won. They they were they the number two, one I thought. that they did. I'm saying they were like a the number one team. If you were going through power rankings after a few weeks, they were at the top. And yeah. Uh, Vietnam, the mega wet leg was the great equalizer. That's something I mean, I know Logan like throws those stats out there, which I was why I always like watching his video because he'll be able to tell you what the biggest swing was in a single leg, what the mega leg has done. His one he just wrote a couple of days ago, the one about like the mega leg stats and strategy, I thought was really interesting and it applied here. So, I mean, mm. um, we're going to be going to India next. Um, like I said, Jocelyn Victor, cool team. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I, I would be, I'm very curious, like how close were they in time when they like arrived? Like how far behind were they initially? How much time did he get to search compared to maybe some other teams? Something that you're not going to be able to get with that many teams, get that right. sense. But that would be something that maybe 
would be covered up in the editing. Maybe they didn't. He didn't have a ton of time to search comparatively. Yeah, because Joel and Garrett, I thought, got there second, and they were ninth. So, like, how long were they really there? And that's like those times where it's like, not that, that I want to see the clock to ruin things, but I'd like to just know every time they do a challenge, like how long it actually took them. Cause then it'd be like, Oh wow, this team's actually really good because they're consistently getting there later, but they're doing these challenges or detours in like half the time of other teams. Yeah. That'd be interesting. The... I'm surprised they don't give us that information. Like even at the end. Listen, yeah, man. just like the end of a Mario Kart where it's like your times, like yeah. the last one, like, that was one, one two, three, total. Be down with that. Yeah, I want my splits. Oh, I did. I I really sucked in part in lap two, but like I could get better. Yeah, <laughs> power slide more. <laughs> um, look, like I said overall, the one thing I think we all can agree on, and I think a lot of the fans and people I'm seeing just early on social media is the merit of ninety minutes. Um, I thought the merit of ninety minutes especially would come into play with more people, so we could get to know more people. I didn't really feel like we that the the brothers we got to know about the brothers basically this week. Yeah, they cried yeah. a lot. Did they cry a lot? Did they cry? Um, make sure you're subscribed here and on TikTok, Kyle. What can they find you on for the Strat Chat Pod? They can find us on all the socials at Strat Chat Pod, and we're live twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Big Brother is our jam, even though you guys hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're all about. Yeah, so come hang. Uh, yeah, uh, the next <laughs> review or the review before this one will have been our survivor review, and um, it's going to be a little bit less glowing probably than the amazing race review. Really? There's your little tease. Uh, we cover the Golden Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise. We just finished Love is Blind season five and the reunion. F Boy Island premiered this week. Um, what else do we got going on, Brian? I, like um, I missed Love and Hip Hop this week, but that was because my kids are sick, but I I will do it next week. Um, what else we got? Uh, I think that's it for now. And then... Pretty good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the shows are going to... Oh, we have Summer House starting next week, which is kind Summer of... Summer House starting... Oh, and we're doing Southern Charm. Yes, yeah, Southern Charm. Yeah. yeah. So there we bravo, go. Bravo, baby. I was missing. Yeah, bravo. So I will somehow watch that's our shit. nine seasons of Southern of Winter House in the next week, but whatever. I'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you'll um, get that. There's only two. Yeah, no, I'll be all right. But until next time, for myself, Brian and Kyle, thank you. Peace.